Understanding the intricacies of inside pitches in the batter's box is crucial for umpires looking to move up in their associations. From our starting slot positioning, we have to understand how to direct batters and to adjust ourselves to call balls and strikes safely and effectively. Then, after all of that, we need to be ready to strictly enforce the rules that govern batters, the batter's box, and whether we're giving a base when a pitch ball hits a batter. So in this video, we'll break down all the rules you need to know along with advising on how to enforce those rules while also painting a picture of what you'll see when this happens in your games. And of course, we've got case plays to help you solidify your understanding of the rules linked in the video description. Hi everyone, Patrick Fiber from GHSA Baseball, Umpire Development and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires develop their knowledge and skills. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you're looking for a package course for new umpires, either for yourself or for use in your association, you can learn more by visiting our website, umpireclassroom.com. To start, let's review what is called the slot. This is proper positioning for the plate umpire with our head between the batter and the catcher. From this position, we're able to get closer to the plate than if we were directly behind the catcher, which helps us better gauge the bottom of the zone. But even more importantly, the slot is the safest place for a plate umpire to work. Most balls are not fouled directly back, but instead slightly off to the side and away from the batter. So this position will keep you safe while giving you a great view. Now, where issues tend to come is from batters crowding the plate as well as sidearm pitchers. So let's first talk about the batter's positioning and then we'll get to how we adjust once the batter is legal. So to start, we all know that batters need to be in the batter's box. And as clarified in the case book, the lines of the box are considered inside the box. So for a batter to take his position, he must do so with no part of either foot touching the ground outside of the lines of the box. But if his foot is on the chalk and inside the box, then he is legal. Moving forward, the box is four feet by six feet, but the relevant rule I wanna cover with you in this video is the distance from the edge of the plate to the batter's box. This is given in the rules book in diagram two, which has the official measurements of the field and shows the gap to be six inches. Of course, this isn't very helpful if the inside line is not properly placed or has been removed during the game, but don't worry, we have a couple of tools to quickly draw a line without delaying the game. The trick I use is that I've previously measured six inches from the tip of my shoe and found that that ultimately comes out to be just before the arch in the shoe. This way, I know on the field, I can draw a line in the dirt six inches from the plate by measuring only using my shoe. Using this method, I can quickly get the proper distance and then draw a line either with the edge of my shoe or more likely using the knob of the batter's bat. Ultimately, this is the first significant step umpires must use when struggling or if batters are too close. Ensure the line is drawn correctly and defend that gap so that you can see. Then once the batter is in a legal position, that doesn't necessarily guarantee we'll still have a great view from the slot. Some batters hold the bat further from their chest, others lean towards the plate, and of course, if it's a righty-righty matchup with a sidearm pitcher, you may still struggle to see the release. This combines with the possibility of the catcher coming inside, which really squeezes our view. The trick for umpires is that we don't want to work further from the batter because that puts us in a position to get injured. Instead, we want to work up. So if the catcher comes in and our view is blocked, try raising up, which will help you compensate. If things get really tight, then you may need to try and fight more for the view but again, do not work away from the batter. We'd much rather you be safe. Moving forward, we've discussed the best ways to set up, but let's cover when the pitch is delivered. First, what happens if the batter gets hit? For that, we use rule 7-3-4. A batter shall not permit a pitch ball to touch him. The batter remains at bat, pitch is a ball or strike, unless the pitch was a third strike or ball four. To clarify, the batter can't intentionally let the ball hit him he has to make some effort to get out of the way of the pitch. Of course, this is up to the umpire's judgment, and generally, we should be reasonably lenient. If it's a 90 plus mile an hour pitch, it likely has some run on it, and the most we may get is the batter turning his shoulder. So probably not permitting versus unable to dodge. On the other side of this, we have off-speed pitches and breaking pitches, but again, use good judgment. You'll often see a batter freeze and get hit by a breaking pitch, which doesn't mean he permitted it. By definition, a breaking pitch is expected to curve or move, so a batter has to stay in to face the pitch in case it does break into the zone. Okay, so when do we keep the batter up? 
Generally, we are looking to see if and when they may lean or turn into a pitch. A key indicator for this is if they get hit near the elbow, especially if they have an elbow pad. As you see in this video, hitters will commonly lean into the pitch with a pad to get hit and awarded first, so it's crucial we keep an eye out for this. And don't worry, this is actually going to be easier to notice than you think. What you're going to see from the slot is a pitch coming directly towards you that you're tracking, and then you'll see an arm or elbow get in the way. For the plate umpire, this will actually be a pretty easy and obvious call. So after ruling that the batter permitted the ball to hit him, it's a dead ball and we have to decide if the pitch was a ball or a strike. If the ball is in the zone, it's a strike. If it's not, it's a ball. Before wrapping up, let's focus on batters making contact with the ball while their foot is partially or entirely out of the box. Well, 7-3-2. A batter shall not hit the ball while either foot or knee is touching the ground completely outside the lines of the batter's box or touching home plate. So there are three key rules here. First, this rule applies to any contact between the bat and the ball, regardless of whether it is hit fair, foul, or even a foul tip. Second, the foot must be entirely out of the box, so if it is partially in and partially out, then it's legal contact. This is different from the requirement for a legal stance in the box, so while this would not be a legal stance for the batter to take, it is a legal positioning for his feet when he makes contact with the ball. Third, and this is different from OBR rules, the plate does carry an exception that any contact with it while making contact with the ball is an out. So if the batter squares the bunt and his foot, which is probably longer than six inches, touches the box and the plate while he makes contact, he would be out. Finally, to give you an idea of what this will look like, let's discuss a bunt. The batter, starting in his stance in the box, will square his body and hips to the pitcher while bringing his back foot forward. Just like the inside pitch, you'll be tracking the ball from the pitcher's hand and then your view will be blocked by looking at the batter's back. At this point, you won't be able to see the pitch, so you'll glance at his feet to see why you can't see the ball, and the batter's foot will be outside the box. And here's how the conversation with the coach will go. Andy, his foot was entirely out of the batter's box when he squared and bunted that ball. Well, how would you even see that? You're supposed to be looking at the pitch. You're, you're looking at his foot, you're not even looking at the ball? Well, I was watching the pitch until a batter ended up stepping in front of me, blocking my view of that pitch, and all I could see was his foot out of the batter's box. So now that we've reviewed the rules and procedures, let's cover this week's case plays. Case play number one. What is the distance between the edge of home plate and the batter's box? Is it four inches, six inches, eight inches, 10 inches, or 12 inches? The correct answer here is B. The proper distance from the plate to the batter's box should be six inches. Case play number two. One is at bat with a 3-0 count. The batter rolls an elbow into the strike zone and the pitch hits B1 in the shoulder and would have been a ball. Is this A, this is a dead ball strike, B, this is a dead ball and B1 is awarded first, C, this is a dead ball and the pitch is neither a ball or a strike, or D, this is a dead ball and the batter is out. The correct answer here is B. This is a dead ball because we had a batter get hit by a pitch but it's also gonna be ball four because the pitch hit him outside of the strike zone. So while it's not an award for a hit by pitch, it still counts as ball four and the batter is going to first. Case play number three. B1 is at bat with a three and count. The batter rolls an elbow into the strike zone and the pitch hits the batter in the elbow and was in the strike zone. Is this A, this is a dead ball strike? B, this is a dead ball and B1 is awarded first? C, this is a dead ball and the pitch is neither a ball or a strike, or D, this is a dead ball and the batter is out. The correct answer here is A. This is gonna be a dead ball because we have a batter hit by a pitch, and it's gonna be a strike because the pitch was gonna be in the strike zone. Case play number four. Is this stance for the batter legal? Is this A, this is legal? B, this is illegal, the batter is out once the pitcher delivers the pitch. C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count once the pitcher delivers the pitch. D, this is illegal, instruct the batter to take a legal position in the box before the pitcher delivers a pitch. The correct answer here is D. This is an illegal stance because a legal stance requires that the batter have no part of his foot in contact with the ground outside of the batter's box. That said, we need to know that there's no penalty associated with not being in a legal stance. Instead, the umpire is supposed to direct them to get into a stance that is legal. Case play number five. Is this stance for the batter legal? A, this is legal. 
B, this is illegal, the batter is out once the pitcher delivers the pitch. C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count once the pitcher delivers the pitch. D, this is illegal, instruct the batter to take a legal position in the batter's box before the pitcher delivers a pitch. The correct answer here is A. This is a legal stance, and we need to remember that the lines of the batter's box are considered to be within the batter's box. So the only requirement we're looking for is that no part of the batter's foot is in contact with the ground outside of those lines. So in this scenario, this would be a legal stance. Case play number six. B1 starts with a legal stance in the batter's box. When the pitch is delivered, the batter strides forward and his foot lands half outside the batter's box and half touching the chalk of the batter's box when he swings and fouls off the ball. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is illegal, the batter is out, C, this is illegal, add a strike to the count. The correct answer here is A, this is legal, and we need to remember that there's a different requirement for a legal stance versus legally making contact with the ball. In this scenario, so long as his entire foot is not in contact with the ground outside of the box, he's considered as making legal contact. Case play number seven, the batter squares the bunt with his feet in these positions. He gets the bunt down and reaches first base safely. Is this A, this is an illegally batted ball, the batter is out. B, this is an illegally batted ball, a strike is added to the count. Or C, this is legal. The correct answer here is A, this is an illegally batted ball and the batter is out. While both feet are still making contact with the batter's box, there's a notable exception in the rules that any contact with the plate is gonna make it an illegally batted ball. So in this scenario, even though his foot touches the box and the plate, that touching the plate means that it's gonna be illegally batted and the batter is out. Case play number eight. The batter squares the bunt with his feet in these positions. He gets the bunt down and reaches first base safely. Is this A, this is an illegally batted ball, the batter is out. B, this is an illegally batted ball, a strike is added to the count. C, this is legal. The correct answer here is C. The batter has parts of both feet inside of the box when he makes contact and he's not in contact with the plate. So this is completely legal contact made by the batter. So there you have it, our guide to owning the inside of the box in your games. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out our website at umpireclassroom.com. As always, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the field.